Today we're going to look at Project Maths Long Questions and for this lesson I've picked a question from 2012 paper 1. So it's section B and it's question 7. Now the reason for this lesson is I'm going to give you some techniques that you can use for solving other, other similar type questions and we'll make a list of the techniques as, as at the end and uh, so you, you can have that list and you'll find that that list uh, would apply to other questions also. Now the first thing when, when you look at a question like this, uh, imagine you're inside an exam and, and you're reading this so it, it can be quite off-putting um, to see all that reading that's involved but the good news is the examiner is actually trying to help you, believe it or not, and he's He's doing this thing called scaffolding. Now, what scaffolding means is, um, basically, he's breaking the question down into chunks, and and he he's kind of guiding you along one step at a time. So, if you look out for it, the, the hints are there. Just just to use them. And if we go straight to part A for the moment, and um, we, we come back and read the question fully later, but we can see that uh, he's getting us started here uh, by telling us that the height. Uh, he's looking for the height and uh, at a time t equals zero so he's looking for h uh, when, when time is equal to zero and here you can see another technique coming in and uh, that is you, you're there's a lot of this element of what i call converting english language to maths language he's looking for a height which i'm going to call h and he's looking for a time which we call t in this question and you can see straight away that there's an equation that connects h and t further up so there's the equation, h and t are involved in that equation there. So therefore, it should be fairly obvious what, what to do in this first part anyway. We've got the equation and um, we've got a value for t, so we sub that in to find the value for h. Uh, so we write that down here. T, uh, h equals... ten minus t over 200. squared and if we put in t equals naught uh, you'll find that it just becomes h equals uh, 10 minus naught over 200 to be squared which works out to be 10 squared which is 100 centimeters and the next part of the question uh, is okay as well because now he's again after how many seconds? You notice here again, seconds, we call that T. The height of the surface, we call that H. And he wants the height of the surface to be 64, so H is 64. So again, there's, a, there's an element of just converting English to maths. And we can see that we're, we're talking about T and H again. And we have our equation with T and H, so it's yet again, it's a matter of filling in the equation. So h is equal to 10 minus t over 200 to be squared. And uh, this time it's the other way around. In the last part we had t, we were looking for h. Now we have t, no sorry, now we have h, 64, and we're looking for t. So we sub that in, 64 uh, is equal to 10 minus t over 200. And that's all squared. Get square root of both sides now, and square root of 64 is 8. Now, strictly speaking, it's plus or minus 8, but we're dealing with heights here, so you know we don't have to worry about the minus in this example. Anyway, 8 is equal to 10 minus t over 200. And to finish off, then we just solve for t, and uh, t over 200 is 10 minus 8, which is 2. So t is 400. Okay, then on to the next part. Uh, so we've part B done and uh, just on to part C now. Find the rate at which the volume of water is decreasing. Okay, now this word rate uh, in English, I think we all know what it means, but in maths it has a particular meaning, 
and in maths uh, this word read uh, I'll just write down here as rough work on top read in maths means differentiate it's, a, it's called the rate of change and in maths it always means differentiate with respect to t so you're differentiating, differentiating, differentiating something we'll put an interact here for the moment something with respect to t uh, now yet again what are we differentiating and the examiner gives us gives us a strong hint here now you can see it very clearly he has the word volume in bold so he really is trying to tell us here um you know the next step um as insofar as he can so the, the, he, we're getting the rate of change of volume so volume is is the missing letter v for volume Again, notice we've just simply changed an English sentence in, into a math statement that the rate is dv dt. And uh, next step is, if we're going to differentiate volume, well, we have to do one step at a time. We can't differentiate volume until we actually have an equation for volume first. So for that, we need to go back to the question and see what we're dealing with. We're dealing with, and, uh, we're dealing with a, a cylinder, first of all, and in particular, a cylindrical amount of water and this, the, the cylinder of water has a height of h the radius is 52 and we can now go back and use those so the volume is equal to pi r squared ok we we'll just fix that by r squared h and we can fill in those values pi r squared is actually r is 52 so it's 52 squared by h 52 squared on the calculator 2704 pi by h now we have the volume uh, only thing though is we have it in terms of h and if we look at what we're looking for the rate of change of volume we have to get a t in there somehow we need to get a t into our equation because it's d dt for differentiating so we now need some connection between height and and time and it turns out that there is this connection in the question if you go back uh, the connection between height and time is, is the original equation itself. H is 10 minus T over 200 squared. So that means that volume becomes 2704 pi into 10 minus T over 200 squared. All I've done there is replace, re replace h. And finally we can get dv dt itself, the rate of change. And uh, differentiating this isn't as hard actually as it looks because all of this is constant. And whenever there's a constant, it doesn't, it doesn't out in front, it doesn't actually affect things. Uh, you can just write it down again, 2704 pi. And you just have to differentiate what's in the bracket. Now it's basically something squared. So when there's something squared in differentiation, the square comes down in front. So it's 2 into 10 minus t over 200. And multiplied by, differentiate the t over 200. Now this is easier than it looks, again, because uh, if, you, um, if you just think of 5t, for example, just do a rough work up here for a moment, that becomes 5. You can say 5t, it just goes to 5. If you can say 6t, it goes to 6, and, and so on. If you can say 1, 1 over 200t, which is what we have, it just goes to 1 over 200. So again, why are we doing this? Well, just to go back uh, to the question, uh, it was a constant in front, uh, which, which we uh, differentiated. Sorry, the constant stays as it is. Uh, then there was a squared, and we brought the 2 down in front. And finally, because of the chain rule, we have to differentiate separately what's inside the bracket. Now, differentiate the 10, you get 0. 
differentiate the t over the minus t over 200 and we have minus t over 200 becomes as I just showed you 1 over 200 so we'll just get rid of all these marks okay now uh, one last thing um, he wants the rate at which the volume is changing the rate at which the volume is decreasing when the height is 64 that's an important part as well obviously when the height is 64 so we got to somehow put in a height of 64 in, into our rate equation here again we've got this problem we've only got t in our equation the height is uh, but we're given the height so we need some some kind of a connection between t and h again now if the height is 64 we worked out in the previous part that the time was 400 so we we that worked out previously and this uh, gives us another technique that we can use in a lot of these questions and that technique is very often uh, the answer to a previous part is used in the next part and this means it's very often a very good idea to summarize an answer that you get in, in a part of a question uh, because that, that often makes it much clearer what, what the next step is so definitely you could have it to get into is, is to summarize your answer to each part of the question and and the reason i say that in particular here is because if you look back when the height was 64 we actually worked out earlier on when the height was 64 we worked out that the time was 400 seconds uh, because the height was 64 there Okay, uh, as I said, this question, we're, we're not particularly interested in the answer of this question, we're more interested in the techniques we use, so uh, um, basically at this stage you just put in 400 for t in the, in the equation and you'll get an answer for, for dv dt. So I just want to keep moving on here to, to the final few techniques. And uh, In part d, the rate at which the volume of water is decreasing rate at which volume of water is decreasing again an awful long phrase but at the end of the day it's as we just saw there's a big thing here about converting the English to maths the whole time and here it's no different uh, we now know that the rate is simply dv dt and we actually have that in the last part uh, is equal to is the next bit we have to decipher is equal to in maths language it's the equal sign now the next part is the speed of something, the speed of water coming out of the hole. So there's a, um, you know, a very wordy, um, a very wordy part of our question again. Speed of water coming out of a hole. So we just call that something. We we call it s for speed. Multiplied by, which is just a dot for multiply, area of the hole. The area of the hole is a. Uh, again, I want you to really notice here how we've cut down all, all that, that wordy sentence there in part D just down to one simple equation. And believe me, that would work in other questions for you as well, you know, if you apply that kind of thinking. And uh, the area here, if we just work out the area of the hole now separately, well, the area is pi r squared because it is a circle. And, we, you know, put down pi. If you could go back to the question again, this is where you start reading it a bit more thoroughly, you see that the radius of the hole is 1. So if the radius of the hole is 1, you put in 1 and you get that squared. So the area is simply pi as it turns out in this case. Uh, so if the rate, we'll just call it rate for short for the moment. Uh, if the rate is the speed by the area, well the area now is simply the, or sorry not the area, the speed is what we're looking for. The speed is the rate over the area. Which is pi in this case and and that's part d done again i'm not filling in the values because i'm more just giving you the techniques that, that are involved here and uh so we, so we have an answer there for the speed now finally in, in part e show that um as t varies now that's going to be an important point in a minute as t varies the speed in other words what we call the s uh, is a constant multiple of root h uh, as t varies the speed of water coming out so you see 
He's looking for speed now, and from the last part, we have a formula for speed. So yet again, parts of questions linked together. They, you know, this happens very, very often in the exam questions. So the speed uh, which we have is the rate over uh, the area, which is pi. And uh, just wanting to be careful of here, like, you know, the details are important. He says, as t varies, show that as t varies. Why does he say that? Because, I mean, if we're, when we're thinking our rate, uh, it's, it, the trouble with the last part, we have the rate in the last part also, but the rate here, if you'll notice, was only when the height is 64. Whereas we want a rate that works no matter what, no matter what the height is, at every height the rate changes. Uh, so you just got to be careful that that as t varies is important. What he's, what he's looking for there is for you to go back, you know, to, to the first place you introduced rate, and the first place we introduced rate was here. So he wants you to go back to this part of the question where t was still involved before you before you committed yourself to a value for t of four hundred. So you have to go all the way back to there, and you have to write down that equation, and. Uh, you know, you, you you should find it when you do that that you, you get the result that he wants. Uh, okay, so 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 there it is. Uh, there's, um, you know, that last part certainly what wasn't that bad. You know, um, if you had all your work organized for the previous parts, you know, it, it was just using the the previous equation for speed. Now then, to to summarize all that. Uh, some techniques we learned by doing that question. As I said, use scaffolding. The examiner is trying to help you. If you look out for it, he is breaking things down into chunks. So, you know, use those little pieces one at a time to, to break, it, so break it down in your own mind. Underline keywords. I did that frequently throughout the question. Um, I use this technique which I call converting English to maths, uh, which I, I, seem to, I find from experience turns up a lot in these questions. Uh, summarise the answer for each part. You'll very often find that by summarising, especially if you had a question with a lot of calculations and you kind of lose track through the middle of it, it's nice to sum up at the end and um, to see where you stand in the overall question. And if you summarise at the end, you can often see that the answer fits in perfectly to the next, to the start of the next part. Look for hints from the examiner. Um, there was The word volume was in bold in that question. He couldn't have made it clearer that that was something you were meant to use. Uh, another big thing is if you can't do a part, which can happen in an exam situation, if just some part is just simply too difficult. And but the trouble is you need the answer for that part to do the next part. That often happens as well. Uh, what you have to do in that situation is make up some reasonable answer. Uh, you know that you, you can't let that stop you doing the next part. So you make up something reasonable that that you can use for the next part, uh, so that it doesn't stop you doing the rest of the question. And finally, uh, you know these questions are quite difficult uh, because students are not used to this. What this is called, you know, problem solving is a whole technique of maths in itself. Uh, very hard to avoid for this type of question. Uh, for that reason, very often a lot of students can get, can be in trouble in an exam in this, in this kind of a question. And in that case, you know, every attempt that you make um, can be very worthwhile in terms of the marks. Uh, so you have to fill in every box. Put in something, you know, that, that's reasonable in every box. And uh, you'd be surprised sometimes at, at what marks you can get for that for that attempt. Okay, so, so that's it um, on, on the Project Math Long Questions.